you're watching Something to Talk About. I'm your host, Morgan McCoy. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, on today, I just was praying about what I would be sharing. <laughs> what I would be sharing. Um, my camera person is just making me laugh right now, so please forgive me. But I was praying about what I would be sharing today, and uh, I've been going through my own personal storm. I know we all along the East Coast dealt with Sandy uh, yesterday, and I, I've been dealing with my own type of storm experience I'm like man God I really need I need to be encouraged and I, I'm, I'm seeking you to how to encourage the people who watch the show and I really need to encourage myself um, but I'm so glad that, he, that God is faithful and that in the natural he's in control of those natural storms and you know has more power than those storms and in our own spiritual or emotional storms that we're experiencing that God is also more powerful than those things so I'm just grateful for him being God and um, today it's gonna piggybacking on what I'm going through and a lot of people experience moments where you're like God I can't hear you I I, I want to do what you want me to do but I don't know what what that is what do you want me to do and you're you wanting that type of burning at the bush experience that Moses had like God scream at me yell do something so I don't know what I need to do and um, in my book something to talk about I wrote a piece called can you shout and I'm just gonna share a couple of stanzas from the poem and then we're just going to talk about it for a little bit. Um, again, the name of the poem is Can You Shout? There's so much doubt running through my head, so I was wondering, instead of whispering your will, can you shout? I mean, can you do that burning at the bush type of shout where Moses knew he was hearing from your mouth? Can you shout your plan for me because I'm confused? See, God, it's not like I don't want to obey. I'm just questioning what's the right way, so can you shout, please? I've been on my knees praying for an answer, a vision, an experience that would erase my ambiguity. Shutting everyone out so it's just you and me, but still nothing. They say you always are speaking, yet sometimes we aren't listening. So instead of giving symbols and signs or posing questions in my mind, can you shout, please? Tell me what to do, and I promise I will obey you. I just need to know which way to go. Please shout, yell at me, scream, give a thundering voice so that I might believe that it's you. Can you shout, please? Um... During this, this is, I wrote this two years ago, and I was just finishing grad school, and I'm like, Lord, where do I go after this? And um, really wanting him to shout. And as I was putting the book together, I found the poem, and I ran across in Psalms 22, 1 through 3, David is crying out, and he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest, yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. What I love so much about the Psalms is that you have like experiences when you're reading and, um, you know, the writers are crying out like, God, why am I hurting so bad? This is awful. But God, I praise you. <laughs> and, um, I just love it because, you know, in the reality, like in our flesh and our emotions, like God scream, yell at me, tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. I, I don't, this is an uncomfortable situation. But when you put everything in perspective, knowing that the creator of the universe loves you so much and that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, which we talked about about two episodes ago, and that his word is true, which we talked about last episode. When all that is in perspective, you realize even though you don't necessarily in that moment, that moment of wanting a shout, even if you might not hear that shout or see the lightning bolt <laughs> come through the sky to give you the direct answer that you want, knowing that God is right there with you. And in the book I was talking about how, in my experience, it was like a, like a G version of a Job experience. Like for me, it was a, a horrible situation of just needing to know what... What God do you want me to do? Where am I going? And Job experienced some really crazy things if you read the book of Job. Just a lot. Losing livestock, losing family, um, friends turning against you. Your wife is telling you to curse God and die. Just a lot of stuff he experienced, but he stayed true to God, you know. And I also think about this in, in reference to when we find ourselves in storms or uncomfortable situations and we want God to speak or do something. Um, even the disciples, when they're in the storm, they're like, hey, Master, do you not care that we're about to die? And um, and specifically, Matthew 4, 38, it says, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he asked the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And when I think about that, I just realize that our God is consistent. He really is. 
And when we look at his track record and how he's consistently there and the fact that he's sovereign. So whenever we're encountering storms or moments where we feel like God is silent, well, he's always speaking, but he, we might not be hearing him in the way that we want to hear him or we're not seeing him move in certain areas of our lives and we're just kind of, we're at a place of being confused. And sometimes that confusion causes us to think that God isn't there. And that's a lie of the enemy because God is always there and he loves you so much. And so when you find your place in those sandy storm experiences where it's just like, hey God, do you not care if I drown? What, what's going on in my life? Can you shout? Can you tell me what to do? Those times when we want to get all riled up and scared and frustrated and, you know, all emotional during that time. Realizing that our God is right there with us. And any ship that he is in will not drown. Um, and that's what the disciples, they didn't realize who they had with them. The son of God who can, who can tell the storm to stop and it has to listen. That's who they were in the boat with. And if you think, like, I don't know, like we talked about this, I think, last week or the week before where, you know, if you have somebody by you that you know they're big and strong and you're confident because they're with you, like, that's the same mindset we have to consistently have that, hey, God is in this with me. I'm saying, like, if you're at this place where you're being obedient to God, your desire is to be in his perfect Well, I'm not saying if you're out being like, God, I'm going to do what I want to do, peace. I don't know about that. But I'm talking about for those of you who are really at this place where it's like, Lord, I want to honor you. I want to glorify you. I want to know what to do in the midst of my storm situation. Recognize the fact that he's not going to let you sink because he's right there with you. And so I just want to encourage you in that. And so if you're feeling like, hey, God, can you shout? Just chill. That's what I'm telling myself. Just chill, Morgan. God's got it. You know, he really, really is sovereign and he loves you so very much. I just pray that you just continue to seek him. Read your word like we talked about last week. It is your ammunition. If you're packing, you need to pack. You need to make sure that you have um, get the sword of the spirit and that you're recognizing the truth in the word of God and recognizing that he won't leave you nor forsake you and he'll work everything out for your good if you love him and you're called according to his purpose. Knowing that he's a loving God. He really is and has some wonderful plans for your life. And I just hope that you remain encouraged. I know that we all have ups and downs. Like I said, I'm going through something right now, but God doesn't change. So whatever our situation is, whatever, however we're feeling emotionally, or whatever people do or don't do, God is there. And that's enough, to, that's enough to remain faithful for, to know that my God, the one who created me, loves me and wants to see the best for me. That's a blessing. It really is. So I just hope that you're encouraged. Remember that God loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for you. Um, and he didn't just die. He rose on the third day, giving us the ability to accept him as our Lord and Savior so that we could have a personal relationship with God. Personal, intimate, talk to him every single day. He's walking with us. It's the best news ever. That's definitely something to sing about, something to dance about, something to shout about, and definitely something to talk about. God bless you. Remember, he will never leave you nor forsake you, and he is in the boat with you. God bless.